Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. We cannot let you bring your war here. Outcast. That's all they see. I see you. The way of water connects all things. Before your birth... And after your death. This is our home! I need you with me. And I need you to be strong. Welcome to the spoiler cast for Avatar 2, The Way of Water. Um, Adolf, and I have with me Jake. Howdy, folks. And John. Hey, everybody. And uh, we just did our spoiler-free version, the, the most to our ability, and we get, we're going to jump into the spoiler-filled section here. So if you have not um, listened to the spoiler-free, we're going to spoil the whole thing here. Um, just to do a, real, so a quick, quick recap, we all enjoyed the movie. We all gave it an 8 out of 10, and we all gave it Editor's Choice Grade 3D. Definitely need to watch this in 3D, and definitely worth going to the theaters for. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. To watch this on the biggest screen, Dan. Yeah, it, it's okay to pay the premium for this one. You know, I, if you go to IMAX or RPX or whatever the premium format is in your local theater, you know, it's okay. It's worth it for this. Um, you know, don't cheapen out and don't watch it in 2D because this is definitely worth watching it in 3D, period. Now on to the spoilers. So this is a whole, the whole movie is about revenge. And it's about the revenge of the clone of the previous bad guy trying to kill Jake. And I was like, oh, that's it? Okay. <laughs> but we get more because of the whole thing about whaling and <clears throat> it's um like another MacGuffin, basically, that they're, oh, we have another thing on this planet besides uh, unobtainium. It's now whale brain juice. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I think it took like over two hours for us to be told that. Oh, yeah. I was like, what the hell has this got to do with anything? I was like, (laughs) uh, assumed everybody knows the history of whaling, (laughs) (laughs) the medic industry. Um, so yeah, I was like, okay, cool. I- I'm glad that, you know, I-, I was just like, where is this going? And then they finally get somewhere with it. And it's like, okay, it took us two hours to get here, but okay. And now I know why this, yeah. w- you know, water thing. And no, we had no idea about this in the first one either. So it was, you know, not at all referenced. Um, we didn't even yeah. know there was other Navi. We just yeah. thought it was it. Yeah, I, I think they were smart to leave this out of the uh, trailers because uh, people just want to la 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 pretend that whaling isn't a thing still. But I think this movie is going to probably put an end to it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mind the, the whaling story. I just wasn't how it fit in just seemed kind of odd. But, um, you yeah. know, <laughs> typical Cameron, like how he how he shows how they do it. And the action with it and all the detail and stuff was just was so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. My audience was grossing out because uh, I guess none of them had ever seen whaling footage of what how a whale gets caught. Oh, well, that th- that wasn't even gross compared to the way they really do it. <laughs> I, oh, I know. But uh, modern art, uh, Hollywood is really, um, the last 20 years has really tamed what people see on screen uh because when i went to see midsummer uh i couldn't believe how the the college kids were freaking out thinking that was gross and gory and i'm like oh really yeah and i don't watch any european horror movies from the 70s (laughs) you'll freak out (laughs) if you can't take this yeah 
All right, so the movie starts off, um, at ten, it's been 10 years or so after the events of the first Avatar, and Jake and Naturi uh, now uh, are a family, and they have multiple children, and um, now I was a little bit surprised that Jake is, um, he didn't feel like he really evolved that much from being, you know, there for 10 years as being, you know, a Navi for that long. You would think he would, you know, soften up a little bit, but he seemed like really hard ass. And this is, maybe that's just me. Well, military training is is kind of stays with you forever. Yeah, I mean that that's part of the film where um, it was disappointing. Like it was just kind of a quick hits about they went from being this couple to all of a sudden they have this this big family, and it's like none of we didn't learn at all how Jake. You know, he he could went from human to this alien. We're still not clear on how that whole thing transformed. Um, there was there was just a lot there in the beginning. I felt like Cameron was just being short on, but it still took forever, and we still didn't get a lot of information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, we learned here that uh, Quirik, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, uh, Stephen Lang's character, um, which uh, it, you know, I think he looked pretty badass in the first one. Had the you know cut off of this, the three, like, the claws on his uh, eye, you know, the bad guy of the first one. Uh, he's back here, and he is a inside of an avatar of, um, he's been, uh, apparently in the future, you could uh, clone your mem- your brain and then put it into other things. So I was like, oh, okay, that's... Um, oh, back, <laughs> back, they did a backup, so they did it before he died. Yeah, a battery, you know, an iCloud backup, and it's like, okay, uh, you could just, and at least he realizes, it's like, okay, you know, you can't, you know, I don't know what happened on the planet, but I guess I'd, I'm here because I'm dead, and, uh, you know, I'm going to get revenge, and it's like, okay, I, I, I wish that they really, you know, they, they, they kind of just scratch the surface with a clone, and, you know, realize, you know, he just didn't seem to care, like, he didn't have any kind of, you know, crisis of, of who am I? You know, he, he kind of said that he's not really the same person, but he is. Like, come on, yeah. <laughs> they they, threw, they they said that a couple of times. I think they needed to do more because the scene where he um, saves his, in air quotes, son, just kind of came out of the blue. Yeah, I mean, just pure pure motivation of revenge is kind of a is a weak motivation. Yeah, um, I did like the scene where he kind of found his body, though. Where he was, where he was killed. Um, I, I thought that scene was neat, but you know, just if, if he's this hardened military guy, you know, wouldn't he just recognize that as battle? Like, why does he have a distinct hatred towards Jake? I guess because he turned against him, he he worked for him in his eyes. I just, yeah. I it didn't seem clear with that. And yeah. I want why he. I mean, I remember the first Avatar when he dies. He definitely saw who killed him. Oh yeah, yeah. He knew it was her shooting the arrows yeah, at him. Well, yeah, of course, unless the backup. I figured. Uh, I guess because the backup would have nuts was it would be missing certain memories. Well, yeah, and um, maybe the camera angle that they shot, you know, didn't get it hundred percent or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but when he saw arrows, he knew who killed him. So. <clears throat> the, well, the other why. It would care because a he's alive. He gets to live because the other guy's dead. I mean, I would just not sweat it. <laughs> yeah, right. So I guess another question, you know, the, the, it opens up a whole can of worms of cloning and like, okay, do they just have his you know memory on file and they could just download it into infinite amount of other avatars? Yeah, and if that's the case, then then there's no stakes for his for him to die. Yeah, like he well, he could he could die every movie. What would it matter? You just bring him back. Yeah. Well. This- a little speculation on my part, but it looks like to me what they're setting up is that he's going to surrender his body and give it to his son so his son can be who he truly is. Sure, I guess. Um, I, didn't, yeah. I, I didn't see <laughs> that, but okay. Like, that's what it looks like they're ev- uh, uh, pushing towards, that he's that he's got to learn to basically be a cute ironically be a human being but in a navi body and he's gonna i think he's gonna give his body up so his son can truly be navi but so i mean close as a human i mean i i saw an interview or read something that said two and three the stories were were done 
four and five, they're still not done yet. But with Jake's comment at the end where he basically says, hey, we're not going to run anymore. We're going to fight. This is our home now. So how do you make the movie any different than them getting attacked again? Yeah, I I really don't know. And um, okay, three. Okay, make sure to clarify. Two and three were filmed at the same time. Two and three are finished at the same time. Three, yeah. basically, maybe they're they're at you know working on special effects more, but um, I I think it's like ninety five percent done. <laughs> so you know, the, yeah. but it's not going to release anytime soon. They could have probably yeah. released it next year, but I, they're not. Release it anytime soon is because Cameron knows that doesn't hit if this release doesn't hit a certain uh, money amount at a certain time that he has to wrap the series up with avatar three does it, it it's scheduled for december though isn't it no it's it's a 2024 movie uh, yeah christmas 2024 i believe oh i thought it was christmas of 23 okay my bad oh. now I, I don't i'm not 100 percent sure i thought he was talking about wrapping it up in four but i don't know if he's going to get opportunity for four if three if you know two is not as successful as he wants um i don't i don't know how much of the you know three is basically done and if it, they you know shot multiple endings and if two you know is you know not that big then okay we'll just put this ending in and you know that that happens in some stuff if they know you know yeah. some tv shows do that and they film two endings just in case they don't get you know get canceled and you know but i don't know how that works maybe we'll get a conclusion but maybe not uh, you know it'd be terrible to have this franchise you know end on a big ass cliffhanger <laughs> All right, so um, the, the story here is about revenge and about getting it back. And then we, you know, we learned that the, the character of Spider, which is a human boy, um, you know, he is semi adopted into the, uh, the, you know, not, no paperwork or anything in, in Pandora, but he's adopted into the family with Jake and Naturi. And he's a human boy and, you know, he wears a mask all around and he, you know, feels, you know, has grown up with the other kids and um now i i don't have kids but i, I really think they did a fantastic job of, of capturing how kids are <laughs> um uh, yeah, yeah they they they're, they did yeah i was like going they should i mean because i was like thinking you know this would have been cool if they had a movie of just the kids you know that could have been avatar 2 and then it could have <clears throat> it kind of felt that way in the middle though didn't it yeah uh -huh. um so i i can i ask about the spider yeah. character so in the first avatar it's made very clear that that it's not a military operation the the people that are there are mercenaries yeah you know, ex-military right yeah so if this kid and then they, and then they establish that spider when when the company and the humans are sent off of pandora after they got beat spider couldn't go because he can't go into the um the 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 freeze or whatever they call it to, to be able to travel through space. He's too young. Uh -huh. I'm good with that. Why would a mercenary guy have a kid there that would have had to be what under five, under eight or nine, 10? Why would, why would there be a kid even there? I mean, you know, that's, uh, yeah, I don't have to well, explain to you the, uh, the birds, ask, the bees, John. Uh, <laughs> ask why, uh, uh, the U.S. is, is paying uh, with pays out child support uh, all over the world of military um, brats. But so, are we supposed to make the assumption that he was there on Pandora working as a mercenary? Yeah, had had a had a kid there, a child there with someone. Yeah, that was being brought up there, and that's we're just supposed to assume that's the way it went. Yeah. I, I yeah. guess so. Which yeah. I, right. I agree. It's it's crap. It's not. It's not great. And he's <laughs> aware of it, so he he may have never known that he just knocked. I mean, I grew up in the uh, military brat, so uh, trust me, this is nothing unusual or weird. I mean, I had so many friends who were um, kids of uh, military. You know that dad took off and. And mom did everything she could to get the kid benefits. Yeah, I, I just I just thought it was very poorly explained how that kid was there. Yeah. 
for three, you know, and, yeah, three hour movie. Then I think could have yeah. explained that better. <laughs> and, yeah. and maybe that, maybe that's why maybe Cameron's thinking, Hey, this was a booty call person yeah. got knocked up. So he doesn't want to explain that in a, a Disney movie. I don't know, but yeah, yeah it's probably a booty call. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, all right. Yeah. Uh, you're right though, John, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I think it's a legitimate criticism of this movie, uh, because there was never a reference at all in the first one. We had no yeah, idea. Yeah. No, I didn't. Some that people know certain things that I think, uh, like, know about how the military works and the reality of soldiers and knocking boots and uh, abandoning offspring. Yeah, I mean, the first the first movie is no different. And this is it, – it's all indicative of Cameron's weakness as a, as a you know, screenplay writer. Well, um, Alien has these issues too. It does. It does. And even in the first one, uh, what's her name? Michelle Rodriguez's character, you know, she's there working for him. And then all of a sudden she's not going to do this anymore. Well, what, what changed? Like, why? She all of a sudden just decided to stop shooting them. So he's, he does a lot of this, unfortunately, but I guess the spectacle is so good that I, I look yeah. past it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's part of the reason why we don't give it a 10 or a 9 or anything the higher. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, Adolf. You're right, yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, getting back to the story here, you know, what we have here, um, you see in the sky that that humanity comes back and that Jake is aware what, you know, there's new stars in the sky and the, what that means. And basically, I, I guess it's implied that um, – Pandora is that far away. You need to be in cryo sleep, and you need to take ten years to get there. So that's why they didn't come sooner because it took so long to get over there. Yeah, they do establish that time frame in the first one. I don't remember what the numbers are, but they do talk about it. Yeah. Um, so they're back, and now they want to get revenge on Jake, and then they they're able to find who he, where he is, and they're able to get Spider and uh, torture him. And Jake knows that um, basically. <laughs> They're gonna. Spider's gonna have to give away. You know, get get all the information he has. And even if he's strong, they're they're. You know, she's not a. a you know, he doesn't have that experience of knowing how to handle torture. And he's still a, you know, a teenager. I don't know how old Spider's supposed to be. Like thirteen, fourteen. Probably, yeah. That's yeah, what the I thought. numbers are kind of weird. So I'm like, oh, this was a ten year, ten years. Then why are these kids all look over ten? Yeah. Um. So. So Jake knew that they had to move from the tree area to another area, which um, apparently they knew there was water people. <laughs> and, um, you know, they could go over there because that way they could stay safe. Because if they go over here to the water area, then they don't know where, you know, uh, Spider doesn't know that. And Spider is not going to be able to tell them where they are. And, the, you know, if Spider dies, it sucks, but it's not the whole family that dies. Yeah, and um, so they, they torture Spider, and I don't know what the hell is going on there, but it was like, oh wow, they should have had a warning for epilepsy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like they're like doing a some kind of way to force his brain to have a seizure or something to give his memories. Cause they're like just having like a flash of light thing going around him for like you know really fast and. Yeah, I uh, guess this was a way to try to make a. A kind of a waterboarding kind of scene, but without water. And yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was too. Yeah, and, uh, and that kids, but it failed miserably because there were a lot of crying kids in my audience. <laughs> so, um, Spider does eventually take them back to where um, you know the, a lot of parts of the first movie does, and you know the, he learns how to how they how they live and how they inter- work, and we don't really know any of these other guys that are with him, but some of them are you know basically there to die, and we're like oh, yeah, so whatever. Um, a lot of people, when I saw that the the that, that Sully had all those kids, I'm like going, hmm, who's gonna die? Yeah, yeah, I knew, and and. Uh, and thankfully, one of them did not. Not that I want the kids dead, but thankfully, Cameron didn't shy away from that because yeah. there um, needed to be stakes. Yeah, yeah. For, I will say they were reasonable stakes for this. Yeah, mm-hmm. agreed. And uh, so, go ahead. No, I it, maybe you're getting to it. I I need uh, explanation of the Sigourney Weaver character and her child. Oh, Everyone's I have yeah. kids. I have no idea what that's going on there. <laughs> 
she's pregnant, but then she's in the tube or something, and like she's coming back. You know, the impression that I got at the end of the at first Avatar was that she didn't wasn't able to get transferred into an Avatar for her, but she was able to get saved into the Tree of Life kind of thing. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I'm figuring the Tree of Life um, put her back into a, a, a body and used, this is more Cameron assuming people are very familiar with uh, some of these what immaculate conceptions in the animal world that happen, like with the different reptiles. and. I mean, if anything needed to be cut out, this could have been cut out. <laughs> yeah. Well, but there's a big payoff. Yeah, but so her that that girl that looks like her uh, is is her child. Yeah, but 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 Jake and Natiri are bringing they her, adopt- yeah, raising they, her. Just adopted her. And just like okay, we got Spider. Let's take her on too. Yeah. So, but at the that one scene there, there is um, there there are kids watching like the video and questioning. Who her dad is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It, is that supposed to mean that Sigourney came back as an avatar and then had a booty call with that scientist guy, and that's yeah. their kid? We yeah. don't know. We don't know who the dad is, or if there is a dad. Oh, so you're thinking maybe it's 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 almost like um, they're gossiping because they don't know. I mean. I mean, this is, it could be metachlorians for all we know. Yeah, or is it is it is it supposed to be like Mother A one and she's like Jesus? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. We don't all right. know. All we know is she's got abilities and powers. So, so my thought, my thinking is, uh, the tree uh, put her back into another body and and used. Uh, and used her bot and just saw, oh, she can have, she, I can do this and create a, a baby in her and it could be, she could be reborn. And that's what, and that's what, the, that's what happened. And the baby is uh, called a uh, kitty, right? Yeah. The, the child. The, and yeah, I think a lot of the comments are really grossly unfair. Uh, you know, saying that she's not like it. She's 73. She's not a teenager. Well, the character is is definitely an old soul. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Her performance works perfectly for Kitty. Oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh no, I thought it was great. Yeah, she's I, not a fourteen year old girl. She's an old soul caught in a young body. Definitely. I think my overall challenge is beyond the 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 spectacle, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Is these things that we're discussing? I don't know if they are just signs of more uh, poor screenwriting by Cameron yeah. or their setups for payoffs over the next 30 years <laughs> when, we, the... <laughs> yeah. when we get the next three or four movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. I... Yeah. I also think some of these, uh, cause he did enlist some, you know, different uh, sci-fi writers to help him. Yeah. I think these are some of the concepts that some sci-fi writer who saw, um, <laughs> Uh, the prequels too many times came up with. But I think you're right. I think you're onto something, John, that this is, you know, seeding for the future movies to get paid off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's, uh, it's good and bad to mm-hmm. me. To me. I, oh, see, maybe this is how Spider becomes an, because if uh, the tree can do this, why can't the tree transfer uh, spiders in, into it, into another body or something? Sure, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, Looks like that's the payoff in these is going to be Spider becomes Navi potentially, yeah, yeah. Unless they're still I mean, the next movie is isn't it screaming to be um, Spider's going to go with his dad, be bad for a little while, and then come back and be good and save the day or something? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I actually wondered if the this movie was going to end that that way. Him saving the dad and leaving with him. I was kind of surprised that he said "f you" and took off. Yeah, well, I figured he owed, he just owed him that and nothing else. Nothing more. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see. I, I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go, but um, yeah, it, you have some good points, John, and I don't really have any disagreements with you. Um, yeah, there's a lot there that could potentially be paid off, and put, uh, some stuff that is not explained well, and it's just kind of one of those things. Like Jake says, movie got a movie, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so. Now Jake and his family have moved on to this water area, and there's water navy, and they're different. They have longer tails, and they have you know different kinds of arms that help them. Uh, uh, definitely the Popeye arms going on there. <laughs> yeah, and um, of course, and gr- what was that Jake? And they're green. Yeah, they're a different color. They're I mean they're they're still bluish, but they're more of a <laughs> um, turquoise kind of. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and basically, you know, it becomes like a story about immigration and that family trying to simulate and be part of that new world of water navi. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, we learn that, you know, there's, you know, just having the kids be kids and and being bullies and being stupid and, you know, fighting and, um, you know, there's just little human interactions that I really like, like captured what being a teenager is because oh that brought that this all the foot scenes with the kids was just yep yep i can remember being just as much of a jackass <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no that all that all that was that was really good um i think there was too much of it to be yeah. honest with you but yeah. it was all good yeah oh, it was all good it should have been its whole it should have been its own movie yeah and like you know the you know Jake talking to the leader of that group, and then um, it's like, okay, this is going to be your new home, and it's like this, um, I don't know what to explain it, it's like a a stretched out canopy, I don't know. Um, Yeah. And the kids are walking by there, and then they're like jumping and bouncing around, it's like, that's exactly how kids would be. Yep. Yep. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah. um, Like, bouncing on that canopy, too, I know I would (laughs) have. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I mean the wa- the water water world there in yeah. in Avatar is just is just tremendous. How how they took the dragons in the air and then made them their counterparts under the water, part in and out of the water flying is just awesome. Mm-hmm. So cool. Yeah, it's like uh how to train your dragon. Yeah, right. Oh, but but it's I said if you want to have how to train your dragon movies, I'm going to show you the new bar. <laughs> yeah, it was just so it was so fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this movie, I, I, we can't say it enough. It's a delight to the eyes. It's a visual spectacle. This is like old school Hollywood. Yeah, and like I never doubted the whales. I, like, yeah, they're real crude things. Uh, you know, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, everything looked real. I mean, yeah, it's so neat. And it, it's just so. Everything feels original, too. Like, new. It doesn't feel rehashes from the first movie. It doesn't feel like you stole ideas from something else. Well, I mean, okay, that's where it's a retread in, in some ways, where basically, in you know, the first movie, Jake was becoming a Navi, and now in this movie, he's becoming a water Navi, and, you know, he's, yeah. so it, it's a, you know, a basic, and now we eventually get to the whales, and we learn that the whales have the super blood that um, apparently stops human aging and that's why people are back or or and whatever and it's like okay i guess whatever happened to unobtainium doesn't matter or maybe they just gave up on that so that is the main reason why humans are back or they don't i mean revenge is part of it but it's mostly hey this uh brain juice um has a lot is really profitable <laughs> yeah it was it was weird that that stops aging thing was just kind of like out of the blue wasn't it yeah <laughs> i was like tell me more about that i'm like nope yeah, okay. yeah. It seemed underpriced too, because I think the guy said that the the vial or whatever he had was worth eighty million dollars, and I thought if it's going to stop aging forever, I think it'd be worth more than eighty million. <laughs> well, it? <laughs> may need it. You may need to take over and over and over again. Yeah. 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 I, I, you know, I guess it being the movie being development for ten years, they didn't account for inflation. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> because like, oh, that's okay. Yeah, sure, um, but. I mean, how how much time and how much money does it take to kill one of the damn whales? It's like there's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a major scene, but it's there's, there's like uh, crab subs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, that stuff was awesome. It's just so cool. Yeah, like, and I am glad when they when they killed the whale, they didn't show the killing of the calf. 
I was like going, God, don't show us the killing. No, out. right. Yeah. I can take that. I think I would have burst out in tears because I was already sad enough. That would have gutted me. And, you know, you learn that the kids are, you know, being kids and being, you know, jackasses to each other and, you know, teasing each other. And we're like, oh, you're not a part of the real us. And, you know, a kitty is like, oh, let me explore here and, and do some stuff that's dangerous. And, they're, you know, teach them how to dive. And she she's learning that she could con- help control or have access to some of the other cr- critters, the other water, the sea fish and such. And uh, eventually lead, her, lead them to be part of their tree, which is like an underwater uh, seaweed or something. I don't know. And she connects to it, and then she gets a vision with Sigourney Weaver and, like, about to explain it. I was like, come on! <laughs> yeah. You know that scene where she's in the water and she's, like, staring at the sand? Mm-hmm. What Was there a payoff there about anything? It was no. just her staring at the sand. Yeah. yeah it, it was a movement, so she was watching something. Yeah, but we but we don't know what it was, right? We were never we were never shown what she was watching. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that we didn't pay off, yeah. Make her look weird. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what it was. And then, or at least show her why the kids think she's weird. Yeah. And the connect and then she apparently has a seizure, Cookie or not Cookie, but um uh Kitty and you know, she can't handle the visions and she can't connect to this thing again because she's going to die from it. I was like, oh. Well, she can't connect to it because she's already connected to it. And, and when she connects to the mother tree, she literally connects to the entire planet simultaneously. Yeah. But that would have been nice if that was – I'm just speculating. Uh, it would have been nice explained more. So did did Jake have like a radio to the to the two human characters in the movie? Yeah, they have Bluetooth that go the whole planet wide. <laughs> like, <laughs> like how did they how did they show up? Yeah, I mean, I get, I get why he called, but I was just kind of yeah, I, that was just kind of surprising. Yeah, I mean, what what gotta... wouldn't he be worried about them being followed? I don't get him to get that. Yeah, I mean, movies got a movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Okay, and I just want to know, okay, we've seen Jungle Navi, and we've seen Water Navi. Why are they, each movie, just introducing us to a new Navi? Why can't we get a preview? Like, are there Mountain Navi? Are there Desert Navi? Yes, Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. I was thinking the same thing. And it's like, okay, um, we don't really need a whole movie for each um, location version of Navi. (laughs) But, okay. I guess it's uh, uh, going to be different enough that the desert Navi are going to be yeah. really different. I don't know. Uh, is it going to be Scully of Arabia? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> are they going to be different, uh, same, different color blues? And they, and they, yeah, and they, the... they ride around on flying camels. <laughs> Jake, her. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or, or um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know what color, more shades of blue they could do. I mean, maybe I'm not, um, smart enough to <laughs> go with maybe a more um <laughs> uh, a reddish uh, reddish blue, so we'll get kind of a purple yeah, got okay. dig into your Pantone colors. Yeah, yeah, just get into our Pantones. And then you know the mountain ones. I don't. Are they like more white? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have one leg longer than the other, so they can kind of just walk on mountain sides? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And like, do they have a lot more fur? Kind of butt each other and yeah, I and, mean, and they have yeah. horns to call them in. E cola. <laughs> um. So yeah, I guess there's gonna be lots of them. I don't know. We don't know for sure, but you would think that the, you know we would know. Okay, there's multiple. You know, I, I we didn't know as an audience that there's water people in the first one, and um, I, it didn't seem like it seemed like you know Jake knew, but we didn't know as an audience. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that would have been nice to tell us. And do each of the trees of life or the um do they all connect to be one super tree? I that's what I thought at first for the first movie. So now it's like, okay, there's this water one and then there's this tree the jungle one. Is you know, are they gonna be, you know, different trees, different things? Yeah, are all these gonna unite and get pissed and just kick the humans off the off Pandora? I don't know. I mean, that would be pretty badass if they all unite to be some kind of giant. We are group. Like, like, uh, Navi Voltron. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, um, 
they find out where they live and they start attacking and, and they they kill off one of the whales and then we learn that one of the whales is part of like was is shunned and not part of the community and like the the, the all the sea creatures are all the sea creatures are, are you know part of a community and they you know they love each other and all that and um you know mm-hmm. asked to get shine and 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 prove their worth yada 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 movie's got a movie yeah, I I will say when when um I forget all their names. That was the other thing. It was hard to keep track of all these people. Uh-huh, um, exactly. the one, when the one kid he goes into the whale's mouth and makes the connection. Yeah. Basically, to do the flashback to show you why he why he was thrown out. Th- that I I had no clue what happened with that flashback. I was so lost. I just didn't know what was going on. I think I got. They told us later than what happened. Mm-hmm, but the flashback made no sense. Yeah. Yeah. So why not? Why even show that? Either uh-huh. show it so it makes sense, so you don't have to explain it later, or just explain or, it later. And or that dialogue had it imposed with what you saw. Right. Yeah. Overlaid that, it. It would have reinforced it, and you could have moved forward. Yep. yep. Yeah. It have narration of the well <laughs> because it's it, it's mind right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it, that kind of was weird, and it's like, okay, I guess uh, the um, pe- humanity killed all the other whales, and then that was trying to defend itself and trying to stop it or something. But yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah. But we have a lot of underwater scenes, and the underwater scenes are gorgeous. Absolutely, Man. it feels like you're in the water. They're yep. they're so fun. It's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And like how the the camera goes into the water too, it looks like so real. Like I I feel like I'm really going in. Like when the camera is like half half water, half air, and it's like oh yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, I yeah. did Shark Night water scenes could be topped, but oh, this easily surpasses that. And and Shark Night was underwater scenes were actually actual real. It wasn't a conversion. I really can't wait to to watch the behind the scene making of all this stuff, uh-huh. you know, because I I look at some of that stuff and, you know, we all know they did a motion capture. But beyond that, there's so much stuff. I have no clue how they did it. Mm-hmm. It's just incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the it, capture it, Weaver was amazing. Yeah, I, I don't. I guess they had the cameras go underwater because there's no other way they could do this. I don't, I don't know how they could. Um, I think they mentioned that before that they, you know, that's why it took so long to make it because they needed to have waterproof cameras and cameras that could, you know, really showcase the water. And it's like, okay. And now I've seen it. Oh yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> and uh, an Aquaman is like, uh, yeah, right. right. <laughs> I just get. <laughs> I'm already gonna be dis i haven't even seen a trailer yet i don't think and i'm gonna be disappointed no aquaman just got its ass kicked and it knows it (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah i mean in aquaman i felt like it was disappointing it could have been like this but they didn't go that far and i was like come on guys and then you know uh, wakanda forever did a little bit better but it's still dark and like this is like dope it's beautiful bright and clean you know you could see everything and have fish pop in and pop out and you know have different la- layers of 3d with different I, so. work fast. I mean at, at the end of it all isn't it just a sign that to make it great you've got to spend a ton of money and very few people have the power to get that much money yeah and a lot of time you got to invest yeah, time, time and money, and Cameron's one of the few people, if if not the only one in today's world, that that can force it. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, I think he said that it has to make over two and a half billion to to be profitable. So you can see it on the screen, and it's like, okay, I don't, you know, obviously Fox. Well, you know, that's interpreted. I don't think it literally has to make. No, I I, I think that's uh, false. Yeah. I don't think there's no way. I on IMDb it says the the budget estimated was 350. Yeah, so that means uh, you need to make three times. So that means right. you make around a billion. Which yeah. I th- there's a damn good chance this is yeah. going to before the year's end. Well, and if is that 350? Is that simply what it costs for this one? Because if they film two and three at the same time. How are they splitting up the cost of that filming and stuff? You know, yeah. Exactly. But I mean, they needed to do 
I think end game, once you put in all the salaries and all that stuff, I think that was, that was easily over three fifty, wasn't it? Cost of that. Probably. Probably. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's that outrageous of, of a cost given the product, but. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I agree that, you know, the numbers are probably a little bit over, but we don't really know the numbers. And I, like I said before, if, if Disney, if this is considered disappointment, you know, which is a huge number, you know, if it still makes, you know, if it ends its run at 750 million, well, that would be a great number for most movies, but not for Avatar. <laughs> Even so, in the pen. Yeah. So it's just, you know, that it's a different kind of mentality. You know, is it below expectations or meet expectations or above expectations? And, you know, it's, it's, the, the third one's going to come out regardless. It's already done. It's already, you know, ready to go, basically. And the tracks, I don't think, uh, I don't think even Bob uh, Chapik is dumb enough to can uh, an Avatar 3. <laughs> I mean, no. yeah, I, yeah. Why do that at that point? I mean, they didn't. I think most of the investment was by 20th Century Fox before it was bought up as Disney. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I see no. Uh, now, obviously, if if two and if this one and the next one are really really big, I, I think they'll say, yeah, you can make four, but you can't wait. You can't take ten years to make it. <laughs> now they'll probably let him make uh, four and five at the same time. Yeah, uh, but you know, you have. Five years, two, tops, maybe two and a half, you know. And I'd actually give him enough resources where he can, he'll have, he can double up. So, um, yeah, the, the last, I guess, ha- act of the movie is basically them trying to kill each other. And, uh, you yeah, know, a 45 minute, basically, Titanic 2 with a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was. A little, uh, even felt there are even times where it felt like aliens too in the corridors yeah. and stuff. It's like the great Cameron's greatest hits. Yeah, yeah, he took everything that he learned in the other ones or was successful with and incorporated him into this last scene, mm-hmm. which was fine by me. I thought it was a blast. Yeah, because you go out of the theater humming and happy because that that last forty five minutes was action kick ass. Now, most of this movie is pretty action kick-ass, though. It's not completely, you know, there's a lot of, it does slow down to, you know, let you see things and be like, ooh, pretty. But it does have a lot of action from beginning to end. It, there's a lot of action here, so I think most people won't be bored. It's, it's fairly entertaining. It's fun, you know. Any, the smalls are going to get scared. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely two parts. Um, I guess the first part was in the jungle when they were able to capture the kids. Um, a lot of people jumped in the theater when that happened. And I, I, I almost jumped, too. I was like, oh, shit, I didn't see that. Oh, the, <laughs> it was when the kind of the shark-like creature was chasing the younger son, and he was crunching that reef. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty I, terrifying, yeah. I ran out of my seat, because that was scary, That that crunching. Yeah, yeah, the sound design in this movie was incredible. And I guess when we thought that the son maybe drowned and then he, he woke back up and he's on a rock and then the rock and you know shot out water, I think that scared a lot of people too. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I think that was the part where people jumped the most that I remember. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's yeah. it, it, it definitely... Scary. That was like Jaws scary. Yeah, it's it's definitely because you're invested and you're like, oh, I care about this guy. I don't want him to die, and you know he's taking care of his, his family and like you know it, it's it's part of the movie making magic is that he's you know a, a digital creature is on a, another digital creature, and, and you know I don't know if any of that was real except for the background maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, two digital outcasts try to help. The, a bunch of uh, digital people. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it scares you because you weren't expecting it to be, you know, oh, top of a whale. You thought it was a rock or whatever, an island, and um, you know, it looks that real that you don't guess. Oh, it's yeah. Oh, well, Pandora turns out to be on on the back of a turtle. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now another, I guess another thing was here is that that mask that um. Spider wears is pretty damn top notch. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, this thing can can withstand anything. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, of course, of course it does. If it breaks, he dies. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess masking has become quite a, a uh, different yeah. thing in, in the future. Yeah, they have an oxygen tank because it seems like it filters out stuff and converts it to something breathable. So, yeah, um, we do eventually see, um, I guess, the, the middle? No, the young... How many kids are there? There's four kids? Five kids? Um, there's the, the the young girl, the, the young boy, the middle... Um, and then the older one, I think, and then yeah, there's four, I think, total. So uh, one of the kids dies, and um, yeah, that it, it, I didn't quite cry there, but I was on the edge. But a lot of people were crying in theater. Yeah, uh, yeah, mine too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they because I don't think they figured out when you have this many kids. This is a Cameron movie. Somebody's dying. Yep. And and Zoe Sandana as Naturi was incredible and showing off that raw emotion that you would expect any mother to be, you know? Mm, yeah. And, you know, Jake saying, we have to go, we have to, you know, kill the bad guy. I love that Zoe Sandana said originally, I killed you once before, I'll kill you again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Such a great line. And it's like, I don't care how many times you come back to life, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she it felt like she disappeared in the middle of the movie. So, um, but she got a lot of focus in that, that last 50, 45 minutes, which she was really good at when, when she's doing attacking the people on the boat. That was scary. (laughs) Oh, it's just so awesome. It's so good. So well shot. Yeah. And you know, that's like, you know, classic, um, mother mad at you kill my kids. I'm going to go, you know, crazy and, uh, you know, just, unleash everything to kill you know get revenge and uh it was it was pretty awesome to see and uh just that whole back and forth are they gonna die or it's more people gonna die and you know the 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 whale jumping in and helping and the whole thing sinking and it's like it's so and then there's like a dark scene where like oh wow is the little girl and the mom gonna die and 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 it's really dark but it still worked it still looked great in 3d oh and Oh, and remember the, the, the two guys on the boat that just he was real sympathetic but he passed out because of the situation. Mm-hmm. And then Dirk who um gets killed and the audience my audience cheered when he was killed and lost his arm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I noticed it was pretty bloodless, so I'm think and the way it looked, I'm thinking that was probably the one thing they had to censor to get a PG-13. Uh, yeah, that might have been the pushing it there for that. Yeah, because yeah. uh, that's the only time that I I fell out of the movie because the effect looked unfinished. Like it had been altered at the last minute. Yeah. Um, and then uh, when, whenever we do go inside the whale, I was like, oh, wow, this is gross. And Or when we go inside <laughs> the, the dead one and, you know, they're trying to show how they're going to you know, get the juice out of the brain or whatever. I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's how, like, a real like, – I haven't actually looked inside of a, a real whale, but, you know, from different kinds of pictures, I, it's kind of what you expect a, a water creature to have inside them, you know? Yeah. yeah. So – as a monstro Pinocchio matchup with this, and you know, eventually Jake and um, General or it's a Captain um, Kurich, you know, is like, okay, fine, we're gonna fight. You know, he's gonna do fight. You know, keep looking for him. Let's go fight now. And they go fight, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I was actually happy they did that. <laughs> and they kept fighting, and then neither one of them, like Jake, looked like he won. But then I was really surprised that I mean. Um, that spider helped get his dad out of the water and that he was still alive. But I guess the Navi yeah. could survive being drowned for a while that we don't, you know, us humans would die in that way, but maybe they're, you know, I don't know. Well, I figured that wouldn't be enough to kill him because the other, the forest Navi were able to hang in the water along with the uh, water Navi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess they they set it up with the sun, you know, it looked like he drowned, but he didn't drown. So, yeah, and then it seems like Spider was just trying to get attached and interested in being with his quote-unquote father. But, like, I do like that he said that I wasn't, you know, I'm not your real father. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a clone of him in another alien body. We're not even the same species. But, you know, he still has the, the, the memories of him, and it's the closest thing to, like, a biological 
you know, family that Spider has. And but even though yeah. he does, you know, hang out with the Jake family, so yeah. Well, the you know, Jake's family is his family, but I think he paid back. He saved his life. He <laughs> favor. Yeah. And it looks like he was also decided to keep that information to himself. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, another MacGuffin with the, the brain juice and, you know, <laughs> um, which I was like, really? You really? It's, it's a revenge plot, which is the basic, the most basic ass thing in, <laughs> in the story. Revenge for killing me or whatever. It's like, okay. And then, oh, it's, it's a real, you know. Okay, another MacGuffin with the brain thing. It's like, we had this already. This is the first movie with the, uh, you know, Unotanium, which, of course, that's a horrible name for, uh, and it basically is, you know, MacGuffin as a name, so. Well, I I always took it as a bit of kind of sarcasm and irony with the name. I don't know if it was in, in story or just for us in the meta to kind of just laugh at how dumb these concepts are. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. It could go either way. <laughs> we really don't know if he's being meta or if it's like supposed to be basic and they don't care. You know? Yeah. Or... Mm -hmm. With Cap, you never know. Because sometimes he's really out there with this really deep idea and other times it's just an inch deep. And I thought it was kind of was like okay, I guess the him, you know, the bad guy learning how to fly the um, the dragons um, was pretty easy for him. And I was like, wait, what happened to that big ass red one that uh, Jake had at the end of the first Avatar? Did that die or something off screen? We don't know. But you remember what I'm talking about, right? Because like, that was like the one that yeah. the ancestors like, new one for a new line of toys. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised they were almost an hour in um, because it wasn't that much going on, but there is that much going on because it's a three-hour movie. <laughs> yeah. Three hours and 12 minutes. And I, I did not stick around. I, I looked for a post-credit scene before I walked in the theater because I was like, all right, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Uh, I, you know, I can't hold it for four hours. Um, so, yeah, there's no post-credit scene and that I know of. I don't know if you guys stuck around for that. Uh, I checked the, is there a post credit scene on the net? And they said, nope. So I knew before going in. Yeah. Uh, they kind of just showed off different scenes from the movie and the credits, but it wasn't, I don't think, you know, I don't know if that was even 3D because I didn't. Oh, think I, oh I, I was 3D in my screening. I sat around for that. And once the screen went black, I just. Pfft, yeah, that's what I, that's what I did too. I was ready to burst by that point. Because I can't walk that much water. And not need to go after three hours. So yeah, there's so many questions here. You know, does um, Kitty is she like a super special avatar Navi because you know she could control these critters? You know, these creatures, these fish things. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is what's going on with Sigourney Weaver? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we assume who are we? We assume she's a, a clone of um, of her character. But what if she's actually the tree? I mean, we don't know. It would be nice to have some more clues. I mean, it's interesting, but I would have still liked more info. Yeah, I agree. Especially when you've made that much of a commitment to a movie. You're there for three plus hours. Because mm -hmm. there, there's a difference to me of, of going into the next one with, hey, these things happen, and I'm curious to see how they play out, is different to me than saying, hey, this stuff happened, and I'm not sure what the hell happened. With, yeah. with with certain things, which is I feel more like that, you know, it's it's not like a Marvel thing where they drop this stuff and you're like, oh, okay, this happened. So I look forward to seeing this down the road or that down the road, um, which it was used to be a lot of their end credit stuff. This is more of like, hey, all this stuff happened and we're not clear on what happened. So it's very different to me. Yeah, exactly. It's a little frustrating. Yes. And and there's like a throwaway line when uh, you know the the I guess the general um, was explaining to um, the captain and it's like oh yeah the Earth is in pretty bad shape and it's like oh what's going on with the Earth I want to know about that and they're like nope that's it it's, you get a one line I check in with Earth to see yes yeah, so, yeah right so now now they're moving there they're moving everybody there from Earth where did that come from yeah, yeah. and also how many humans are left. 
I mean, right now we have 8 billion people. Uh, uh, is it more? Is it less? Is it is, is, is the people that can pay 80 million for a shot of uh, well brain juice coming? I mean, what's going on? Yeah. And yeah. So it, here's the other thing. If if you're moving here because the earth is shot, why are you getting juice to keep people from not dying? Don't you need them to die so you have more space? And why yeah. would you want to live in that shit over Earth? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like going, right. uh, are is, uh, is this? Are you going to uh, convert uh, humans into Navi? Right, because you can't breathe the air. Yeah. Is it, so is this is this military group? We're going. Test? Are they just guinea pigs to see if it's viable? Uh, they're going to do a total recall and put like the oxygen things on uh, Mars. <laughs> the converters, yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, I guess is there other planets they've gone to, and, and you know, no other hot, you know good life, but Pandora is the only great life. And then while they're there, oh, let's see what other things we can profit off of. And then, oh yeah, they have this metal and titanium. Oh yeah, we have this well juice. You know, is there going to be cactus juice? You know, it's in the desert or um, mountain lava or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, uh, or they have the rock they can split in half and it's perfect fusion yeah um oh yeah the the rocket the lava is super nuclear or something that you know i don't know but yeah it, i guess it's cool that the you know scientists found more than one thing on the planet that's worth making a lot of money for um mm -hmm. but I, I don't know why, you know, well juice is the only thing. I mean, I guess they've given up on an otanium or whatever. I don't know. So many questions. Maybe they find out well flesh is, uh, has no cholesterol or something or clears up your cholesterol and your pimples. and. Yep, you know. don't know. So, yeah, you have these big ideas here that they just barely scratch the surface. And, of course, the big idea of immigration and, and Jake and his family being part of a new herd and new people and, you know, are you feeling welcomed and that, you know, alienation and all that. It, it's just barely scratched that surface. And it's just like, come on, you have some deep ideas here that you just don't touch. Here's a question I have to ask. Okay, Jake's, okay, his mind is put into a Navi body. So he's in a Navi body. Mm -hmm. Why his kids part human if he's biologically Navi? Yeah, that uh, is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Is there something with the cloning process that part of your body is? I mean, they didn't explain that. No, and and his his part with that wasn't through science. That was through the tree, right? Uh huh. So yeah, yeah I have no, I have no idea. It's a good point. We had something to do with uh, the miraculous birth of Kitty. Yeah, there's so many questions here that are just like unanswered and and things that are yeah. could have been touched <laughs> but didn't. Spectacular movie visually, I'd be giving this movie a five. Well, I don't know about that. I still was very much entertained and I almost cried and you know it's still. A fun, enjoyable movie enough that I think it's great. You know, if there was all human people instead of, uh, I think I st still would have liked that story enough. It's just, you know, it doesn't go that much more. It, it, you know, that's why it couldn't go higher. And, you know, I do prefer, like I said in the before in the spoiler free, it's like Terminator 1 and Terminator 2, where Terminator 1 set it up and this is Terminator 2. We did the, it was a retread, but it also got more emotional. This got more emotional too. Now, I don't think this is as good as Terminator 2 was, but, um, now I guess another question too. I was expecting the Navi to be more tech, tech, technological advanced since, you know, Jake has been there for 10 years and, you know, he has all the human, you know, stuff, and you would think that they would be a little bit more advanced and try to have some technology, but it seems like they're still shunning technology. I guess they don't see a use for it, and they just see it in negative terms. I, yeah, I, I would think I, Jake would would they, leave that part of his they, life behind. Yeah, had more discussions about the technology and their philosophy of life. I mean, I this did... is something that actually happens among uh, indigenous people around the globe how much do they interact with modern world and how much how much do they let in and and how much of their culture do they double down on to make sure it stays around 
and like I, I did like that once the Navi were killing the humans and they were taking the weapons and learning how to do that. I was like, yeah, damn right, you should. <laughs> yeah. So I was expecting them to have more of that and understand that more, but they, they're still using bone arrows, and it's like, okay. Yeah. Well, well, the, well, well. Part of that is there's a real famous thing that some general said in Vietnam that when about because when they were being attacked with bows and arrows, says you can't win against the people that will go against tanks and airplanes with bows and arrows. Yeah. You can't beat those people. You have to kill them. Because anybody who will come at you, willing to come at you with just bows and arrows, you can't beat them. So I think you covered everything here. There's there's so many questions here. There's so many things that could have dived deeper in, but they didn't. And it's still an entertain, very entertaining. I was not, you know, three hours. It did feel long. I won't. I will definitely yeah. say that. But I was entertained all the way through, and it was fun. It was good. You know, I love the action here. The visuals. We've said it a hundred times already. Are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a spectacle too many times because this truly is a spectacle. Yeah, and the action scenes are so well done. I mean, James Cameron knows how to do action so well. It's so exciting to see some of this stuff. And even just the wonder stuff is, is so beautiful and so imaginative. And it's like, okay, cool. I'm I'm totally game to see these fish things, you know, float around and, and just how everything was there. Um, like I love how even the basic things like you know Navi getting out of the water and their their hair is still wet and their the body is still shiny and it's like oh, it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just makes I just want to see more of the world. Yeah, I mean it, I think there's like a, a was it called Avatar or something rather um, where the first one people were like oh I, I wish Earth was this pretty and um, it definitely is going to be that way again for this movie. Hmm. Where people are jealous of the movie being so pretty and like, you know, this... Our yeah, human... Well, quit polluting the world and we can have nice things. <laughs> so, um, was that right, though, uh, John, that it may be connected more with you since you're a parent? Because they definitely have a big theme about parents and kids and all that. Um, I, I'm not sure if it would more. Um, I think you certainly, as a parent, you can relate to Jake's challenges is, is trying to be, um, you know, the storyline where the, the first son is kind of the, the mirror image of his dad. And and the second son, um, probably doesn't have the same interests and, um, same skill set. So he feels like he's not living up to his father's expectations. Um, yeah, there's definitely, that has, uh, true to life feelings to it. You know, at the end, towards the end of the movie, after the older son has passed and the second son basically saves his life, um, he has that moment where he says, I see you. And, and that, you know, that that had all the feels in it for me um, as both a, a son and a, as a father. Um, so I, I thought that's the stuff that Cameron doesn't get enough credit for, I think. Yeah. he He's able to do that in these movies. He's able to do it in Titanic um, even in the abyss, there's moments like that, um, where he, he really is good at that. Um, yeah. he doesn't give the credit for it. Yeah. I would like to see Amron do a movie like meet the Fablemans. Um, now like uh, the- more of a human interest movie out of the sci-fi, uh, realm. Yes. Yeah, I would too. Um, and that's the downside to this Avatar stuff, right? Like, if you think about all the different kind of films we got from Spielberg over the last 20 years, uh-huh. everything from Spectacle, like Ready Player One, to, you know, Fablemans, to, you know, even Bridge of Spies, all kinds of stuff. Uh-huh. And, yeah, yeah, that and that movie's really good. Um yeah, there's just so much I think Cameron could do. And as much as I like these and understand the time it's needed to make it look the way it is, it's kind of a shame that all his talent is only going into this product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would like to see a bunch of little movies. And uh, and I can't help but wonder what uh, Battle Angel Lolita would have been like if he actually directed it. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, I, uh, I, I love that film. Is, but... 
and uh, Dark Fate didn't have a chance. I mean, it might have if Cameron was actually directing it. Yeah. And, oh, I love that final funeral scene and how they reconnected it to the, the world and um, like how they're able to relive that memory. Oh, uh. beautiful. Beautiful. Wonderful. I mean, I imagine if you know you're a parent and you lost one of your kids, that would be devastating to watch that. And it, beautiful and devastating, and something they would wish that they could and, do. A note to self: If I'm ever on Pandora, never swim amongst the anemones. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, he seemed to eat that kid really fast. Yeah. Yeah, but that you know that that scene was 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 great. I mean, all right. Um, I guess that's going to be a wrap for us. Unless you have anything else to say, uh, I think we've said enough. Yeah, yeah, we could we could keep talking about this for sure. But um, go see it, see it, three D, biggest screen you can get. Uh, well worth the the time and the money investment. Mm-hmm. All right, that's going to be it for us. Bye. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Before this podcast wraps up, I want to thank my patrons. Thank you, Kano3D, MK Ultra, Kevin Winter, Alex Folk, and Gravity Head Zero for your financial support on Patreon.com. You can find 3D or 2D on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and more. Just look for 3D or 2D. Thank you for either listening or watching this podcast. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye.